Welcome to another tutorial on LT Spice. In this video, we'll look at how to run transient simulations. And what transient simulation allows us to do is this. If we apply a signal, for example, a sine wave, a square wave, or a unit step here at the input, we want to see how the output of the circuit change with time. <clears throat> and here's the plan in this video. Here's what we're going to do. We'll draw the schematic in LT spice, this simple RC circuit, set up the voltage source to output a unit step so that we can see uh, the step response of, the, of this RC circuit. Next thing, how to set up and run this transient simulation and thirdly, looking at the simulation results using the waveform viewer in LT Spice, much like you would use an oscilloscope in the lab. All right, to get started, we're going to create a new schematic. Click this icon on the upper left hand corner, blank new schematic created. Now, I'm assuming you know how to draw schematics, so uh, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly um, and only mention a few things that I think may be new. So, resistor first. Now, I actually want to rotate this resistor before placing it into the schematic. One of the ways we can do this is to use the hotkey combination Control R. So, hit Control R. Rotate the resistor. Now I can left click on the mouse to drop this into the schematic. Escape. I'm going to put a capacitor down. Escape again. Ground symbol. Escape. And a voltage source. Okay. Now I'm going to wire this up. Next, I want to change the capacitor and resistor values, the resistor to 1K, the capacitor to 1 microfarad. Finally, I want to set this voltage source up to output a unit step. How can I do this? I'm going to hover your mouse over the voltage source, right click on the voltage source. This appears. But now to get the options that I need, I want to click on advanced. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about what's on the right hand side here. We want to focus right now on the left hand side, specifically to create a unit step. Actually, the pulse function will create a square wave, but uh, here's what we're going to do unit step, we're going from 0 to 1 volt. And this transition is going to happen at t0 to 0 seconds. I'm going to give it a finite rise and fall time, just the one nanosecond. And now I'm going to make the uh, the period um, of this extremely long. So uh, for all intents and purposes, it looks like a unit step doing the simulation. I'm going to take the uh, on time here to uh, one second and the period of this to two seconds. After everything is set up here, I click OK. You see this appearing. So now we have finished drawing the um, schematic. Now, before we set up the schematic and run the transient simulation, let's go through what we, we would expect from theory for this circuit. If you've seen this before, it's fairly straightforward. First of all, you compute the RC time constant. So 1K times 1 microfarad gives us 1 millisecond. The step response of this circuit, if 
we apply a unit step at the at the input, the output is going to look something like this, an exponential rise towards the final value. And specifically, if we wait one time constant, so these are specified. In terms of time constants here, the tau, one time constant, two time constants, and so forth. If we, if we wait for one time constant, the output should get up to about 63% of the final value. And you can see here after five time constants, we're more or less uh, um, all the way there. So in the simulation we'll run, we're going to run the simulation from zero to five time constants or five millisecond in this case. So back to the schematic. To set up the transient simulation, we want to go back up to the pull down menu, edit, spice analysis, and make sure you're on the transient tab. So uh, from the little blurb um, <clears throat> a minute ago, I, I said we're going to simulate from zero to five millisecond. So this is where we need to enter the stop time. So it's going to start at zero, but 5m, and this m stands for milli in LT Spice, and we click OK. Again, this dot trans statement is attached to my mouse cursor. Left click to drop this in the schematic. And this is how we can set up for a transient simulation. One more thing before we start run the simulation and that is um, when we look at the results it would be nice if the different nodes we're looking at have some names attached to it that makes sense to us so look up at the icon here if you look at the icon there's one called label net up here so I'm gonna click on that this little window pops up and I'm gonna label the input and output node going to call it the out. That's this node here. So now I'm going to click on that node and this node is now named the out. Okay, that's the only node I want to name the out. So I'm going to hit escape and clicking on this label net again. Type V in. Click on the input node. Escape. Okay, so now we have set up for a transient simulation and have labeled the input and output with the name, net names. To run the simulation, we go up to the icon and click on the running man symbol. Simulation um, is completed and it automatically opens the waveform viewer on top here. I have it configured so it's a white background. You may have a black one, that's the default one. In any case, um, let's run back here. I'm going to probe the input. So as I bring the mouse cursor into the schematic and near the input node, you can see that the mouse cursor is changed to a little symbol of a probe. I'm going to click on that. Although it's hard to see, there is a unit step right there. And I'll also click the output. So there we have it. There is the um, step input V in, and there is the output, which is V out. Now, I'm going to maximize this. And so I want to read off the value um, of, the, of the voltage, for example, at different times here. How can I do that? One of the ways is to use cursors. So if I go back up here and I put my mouse over this uh, V parenthesis V out, notice how the mouse icon changes. If I left click on that, Although uh, again, maybe hard to see. Now there is a cur there is actually a cursor here that I can left click 
and drag around with my mouse. Okay. And what I'm going to do is measure the output at one time constant, and that is one millisecond. That's about roughly here. If I look back to here, at one millisecond, we're at 0.63 volt of the output. Well, it's a unit step, so 63% uh, of the final value of the output. So the final value of the output is one volt due to a unit step, and we're 63% of the way there, just as the theory predicts. So that's um, that's it. That's our quick foray into transient simulations.